Okay, so uh, this is one question of, on the textbook, okay? So below on the following information for BC resources LTD, calculate the cash flow for BC uh, for the company and the cash flow to the bondholders, which is the creditors, and the cash flow to the shareholders, uh, or you can say equity holders, okay? Uh, and then use uh, a 40% tax rate. Okay, so just give me one second. So that's the question, and you can see this question also on the textbook. So in this uh, table, uh, we were provided with uh, lots of numbers for different items, okay? Uh, so uh, we want to know the cash flows for the, for the business and uh, how much cash flows to the uh, creditors and how much cash flows goes to the shareholders uh, for 20, sorry, what I'm doing for 2020s. So that's my bad. Here's a typo for 2020, okay? So now let's take a look at the first step. We want to develop an um, income statement. We want to develop an income statement. Uh, just give me one second, please. Uh, I'm sorry, my kids is at home. So uh, they are making lots of noises. I have to uh, make sure they will be quiet, not affecting our, our class. Sorry for that. Um, so in this case, um, you have learned about those uh, um, accounting courses, right? You probably have learned about introductory financial accounting courses, and uh, you have learned how to prepare like a income statement, right? So now let's take a look from the accounting perspective, okay? This is a finance course, has a different format, but let's just review, uh, start from where you have learned. So you have learned the basic accounting, right? Uh, financial statements. So these four items, sales, cost of goods sold, depreciation, and the interest. These are the things that relates to the income statement. Uh, current eyesight, uh, fixed asset, current liability, long-term asset, this do not belong to the income statement, right? So if you recall, this belong to the balance sheet, right, balance sheet. So with this limited information, uh, let's see, the in 2020, what is the accounting information uh, in the accounting format? What is the income? Okay, so if you follow the accounting format, you start with sales, okay? Remember, we are dealing with the year of 2020, the red column, minus cost of goods sold, okay? That gives you the gross profit, right? That's called a gross profit. And then you calculate your operating expenses. Uh, in this particular case, you have the interest expenses, okay? And you have the depreciation expenses, okay? So together, these two items, that's the total operating expenses. So you use, oops, you use gross profit minus your operating expenses, you get income before tax, right? Income before tax. And then you apply the 40% tax rate, you figured out what is the tax. And the difference become your net income, right? So that's basically uh, from the accounting um, courses you have learned. Does this make sense? If this makes sense, give me a sum up. So whatever I'm talking about here, if this makes sense, give me a sum up. One, two, three. Thank you, LG. Anybody else? Dante, Jivan. So only three of you have taken, okay, Kiden. So there are four of you, only four of you have taken now, uh, Introductory financial accounting. What about the rest of you? Have you taken financial accounting? Okay, 
So if you haven't taken the introductory financial accounting, please uh, raise your hand. Please give me some up. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Okay, thank you, Berlin and uh, Godfrey. Um, I thought those financial accounting courses would be your kind of uh, your prerequisite um, for this finance course. In, in the other institutions I'm teaching, um, usually introductory financial accounting is the um, prerequisites for all the finance courses. But anyways, um, so that's too bad. Um, but anyways, this you are not required to know this, right? I'm thinking that you have already did it. The reason why I talked about this, I'm hoping to, to show you how the finance uh, perspective is different from the accounting perspective. In finance, I want you to remember this EBIT. This is a very, very key concept, okay? In finance, this is not a, a concept in accounting, but in finance, uh, EBIT, earnings before interest and the, and, the, and the tax, you're gonna use it a lot, you're gonna see it a lot. So what is the format uh, of income statement uh, under the finance perspective? So you go with sales minus cost of goods sold and minus depreciation, okay? And that's how you get your EBIT, okay? Earnings before interest and the tax, okay? Of course, there may be some other expenses, right? Um, but in this example, it's only depreciation, right? If you, you have some other expenses, that should be also above the EBIT. And then you calculate the interest paid, okay? So EBIT minus the interest expenses, you have a taxable income. And taxable income minus the tax, you get a net income, okay? Regar regardless of which format, whether it's accounting or finance, right? The thing is, the bottom line are the same, right? The net income is the same, regardless of a format, right? Um, gross profit, that's an important concept uh, for accounting, but it's not, that, it's not even showed up here in the finance, okay? So the key I want you to show, make this comparison is just to help you to think in a different mind because you have already taken accounting. If you haven't taken accounting, great. You just learn <laughs> the, the finance format, right? Um, okay, so now let's take a look at the cash flows. So under accounting, the cash flow, we classify them into three activities, cash flow from operation, operating activities, cash flow from investing, cash flow from financing activities. So when we talk about the cash flow from operations, it's calculated by net income plus depreciation plus interest expense. So the reason why there is a plus interest expense is that the interest expense uh, is considered as a financing activities for some companies under efforts, okay? So this is the, finance, the, the accounting perspective. So we learned in this chapter, we learned something called operating cash flow, okay? So this operating cash flow is in comparison to the cash flow from operations using the accounting jargon here. So how do you calculate operating cash flow? Operating cash flow equals uh, EBIT, okay, EBIT plus depreciations minus taxes, okay? So it's EBIT, you add back the depreciation, okay? And then um, you minus taxes, okay? So that's the operating cash flow. Uh, again, right, you can see that this operating cash flow, uh, this is the term under finance, um, and uh, the result is the same as what you would get from the accounting perspective, right? Using a different format, okay? So let's see. Okay, so does this make sense? So, so far I'm introducing you uh, the finance format and the EBIT and how to calculate operating cash flow. EBIT plus depreciation minus taxes. Okay, so does this make sense? One, two, three, sum up.
Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So that's how we calculate operating cash flow. Okay. And the second step, we want to calculate uh, net capital spending. Net capital spending. So capital spend net capital spending is related to long-term asset, the fixed asset. Okay, and the depreciation. Okay, so um, capital spending means you are spending your money to invest on long-term asset, right? What, what do we mean by net capital spending? In a year, you could acquire some new assets. At the same time, you may retire, you may dispose some of the old assets, right? So in any year, the net capital spending can be either positive or negative, right? If a net capital spending is positive, that means the, the amount, the value of asset you purchased is more than the value of the asset you disposed, right? Okay, so how can, they, how can you know that, right? So basically uh, on the balance sheet, you have a balance, right? The net fixed, the net fixed asset the value, right? You compare these two values, right? One is uh, 73.44, the other one is 76.50, right? So basically this is the formula. So you, you have a starting balance, you have an opening balance, and then you add the net capital spending, okay? This is, right? If this is a positive, you are purchasing something, but at the same time, you wear out these assets when they are generating revenues for you. And we use the depreciation expenses to capture the amount of the wear out of the long-term asset. So in this case, you start with beginning net fixed asset, and then you add net the capital spending and you minus depreciation, you should have an ending balance, okay? So that's the relationship, okay? And with a little bit uh, algebra, not algebra, with, with a little bit of math, right? You, you move them around, you would get this equation. The net capital spending equals ending net fixed asset uh, plus depreciation minus beginning net fixed asset, okay? This is just a reorganization of this equation uh, to the uh, right top corner, this equation. If you reorganize it, you would know that the net capital spending equals net ending fixed asset plus depreciation minus beginning net fixed asset, okay? And we know all these three numbers, right? Uh, the 2020, that balance is ending balance because we are dealing with the year of 2020. And uh, 7344, that's the ending balance of 2019 which is also the opening balance of 2020. And the depreciation for 2020 is 952, okay? So using this equation, we figured out the net capital spending is 1,258, okay? 1,258. Does this make sense? If this makes sense, give me a sum up. One, two, three. That's it. For those of you who didn't give me a sum up, do you have any questions? Anyone have any question? Uh, Golfrey, you have a question? No, okay. Uh, Bernalyn, you have a question? That's okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, I will move on if nobody have any question. Um, so this is the second step, capital spending, okay? The third step is to calculate the change in the net working capital, okay? 
So what is working cap net working capital? Okay, what is the net working capital? So the net working capital uh, equals the difference of current asset and the current liability. Okay, so the net beginning the 2019 net working capital equals the 2019 current asset minus the 2019 current liability. Okay, and of course you are hoping this number to be a positive, right? Because uh, current asset is your resources, right? Uh, current liability is your um, is your obligations. So you are hoping that you have enough resources on hand um, to pay off your obligations, right? So when you have more current assets than current liability, that's a good news. So therefore, you are hoping the current asset, the difference between the two, is a positive, right? So we calculated the uh, the beginning net working capital. That is 1202, right? That's positive, which is good. That means within the 12 months period time, you have enough resources to cover your obligations. Now the ending, okay, net working capital is the current asset 2020 minus current liability 2020. Those are the blue color number. So that is 1174. So now we are saying we want to calculate the change, right? The change in the networking capital. So then you use uh, ending balance minus beginning balance. So the change in the networking capital equals your ending networking capital minus your beginning networking capital, uh, which is negative 28, okay? So this, the change can be negative, right? The change can be negative. Um, so, so if you say um, the temperature has changed by two degree, right? So maybe you are trying to say the temperature has increased by two, two degree. But if you say the temperature has changed negative two degree, right? So that just equivalent to say the temperature has decreased two degrees, right? So change can be either positive or negative, right? So in this case, um, we have a negative. 28, that this just tells us that the net working capital has decreased, okay, uh, in 2020 compared to 2019. So this is my um, change in the net working capital. Does this make sense? Okay, one, two, three, sum up. Okay. It's funny, I also have people do this on the chat. Okay, good, awesome, thank you. I'm seeing from both sides, <laughs> okay. <laughs> on this, yeah, okay, good. Um, now let's move on. So now to calculate the cash flow uh, from I sites, it's pretty simple, right? Cash flow from I sites equals step one, operating cash flows, minus step two, net capital spending, a minor step three change in net working asset uh, capital. So we calculated operating cash flow equals. Ben, ben. Hello, LG, you have a question? Oops. Okay. And we calculate uh, net capital uh, spending, 1258. We, cal we calculate change in net working capital, negative 28. So now, uh, to put all the pieces together, we can calculate the cash flow from eyesight. So cash flow from eyesight equals 1583.6, step one, minus step two, 1258, 1258, minus step three. So here, I want to really emphasize here, when you minus step three, make sure you understand that you are minus a negative number, right? Because Step three, we have a negative 28, right? The formula is to mag minus change in net working capital. So you minus negative 28, which is plus 28, okay? So just be careful, uh, don't forget here, right? Because otherwise you're gonna get a different result. So the cash flow from ISAT is actually 353 and 60 cents, okay? 
So this is the cash flow from the assets. Does this make sense? One, two, three. Okay, good. Good, thank you. And now let's move on to see the cash flow to creditors. Cash flow to creditors. So the cash flow to creditors, so that's the cash flow to the um, to the to the uh, um, to the bank, right? To the uh, people that you borrow money from, right? So one of the obvious cash flow would be um, you pay them interest, right? You pay them interest. So the interest amount paid, that's the cash flow goes to creditors, and the minus net borrowings, net borrowings. So what happened is you may have borrowed more money, right? So it could be that you pay off some loans, but you get a new loan, right? So if you pay off $50, okay, you get a new $100 loan. What's your net borrowing? So let's say in this year, you pay off the old loans, $50, but you borrowed a new loan, $100. What is the net new borrowing? What is the net borrowing for the year? $100? Yeah, so the net new borrowing, $100. So I think this is, should be, let's say, the, uh, yeah, so the net new borrowing is $100, okay? Um, but the cash flow to the creditors would be, I'm going to type it, on here, chat, okay? So basically, the uh, the interest paid, let's say you pay your interest $20, okay? Suppose interest paid is $20, okay? And you also uh, pay uh, pay off uh, an old loan, $50, right? So. This pay, this $50 goes to the creditors, right? Because you give back the money to the creditors, okay? And then you receive a new loan, 100, okay? So what is the cash flow to the creditors? Cash flow to creditors. What is the cash flow to creditors? 80, 70? Okay, I have all kinds of results here. Cash flow, think about where the cash go, right? Think about the money, the cash. So the $20 goes to the creditors, right? So you, you go a, a plus 20, right? Um, the old loan, you pay off the low, old loan, so you give the money back to the uh, creditors. So that's 50, you plus 50, right? And then, they give you 100, right? So you have a new loan. So the creditors give you 100, right? So this is a negative 100 because the cash flow goes to you is the opposite direction. The cash flow to the creditors, right? That's the money from you to the creditors. So if it's the money from the creditors to you, which is the new loan, that should be an opposite direction. That's a negative, okay? So you have, you have uh, 20 plus 50 minus 100 negative 30. So that is your cash flow to the creditors, negative 30. Just think about, right, the cash flow, it's a positive when the money goes from you to the creditor. If the money goes from the creditor to you, right, that's an opposite direction, therefore that value is negative. So the $100 is the money from the creditors to you new loan. So that is a negative 100, okay? So you pay interest, you pay off the loan. Those, all, those monies all go from you to the creditors. So those are positive. So does this make sense? The 20 plus 50 minus 100. Thank you, Godfrey. Yeah, so basically the confusing part here is when they say net new borrowings, I think what they are meaning is the difference between the old loan and the new loan, okay? So that new probably confused you quite a bit, yeah.
So in this example, we know the interest paid is 196. To help us understand the borrowings, right? The change in the borrowings, we compare the balance of the long-term debt, okay? We compare the, 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 the balance of long-term debt. If the long-term debt balance is down, that means you are pay, paying off the loan. If it's up, that means you have a new borrowings, right? So basically what we are doing here is the, the net new borrowings is the ending long-term debt minus the beginning long-term debt. Okay, so it's a native number. That means you are actually paying off the loans. Um, and then you bring this to the formula. So the interest paid is 196 minus net new borrowings minus a native and 21. So you get a result of 1217, sorry, 1217. That's the cash flow goes to the creditors. How do I know that? Uh, I pay off loan by uh, principal by uh, $1,021. In, in the same time, I, pay, I paid $196 of interest together. That's the 1217, okay? So does this make sense? Okay, let's see. Uh, one, two, three. Okay, very good, yeah. Stop me if uh, you have any questions, okay? So that's the cash flow to the creditors. And now let's see the cash flow to the shareholders. So in this part, uh, shareholders will, what are the interactions between shareholders and the corporations, right? So the shareholders can get money back from the corporations through dividend. Right, so uh, the 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 cash flow to the shareholders, the most direct, the most direct item would be the company pay dividend to the shareholders. Okay, dividend paid. Another way to think about this relationship is that the company may want to raise capital from the shareholders. Right. So the company, let's say they are public listed companies, uh, they issued stocks in the stock exchange market, right? So they sell these common shares stocks to the investors and uh, the investors, if they purchase this new share, the shares, they will become shareholders, right? So, okay, the cash flow, the dividend goes from the corporation to the shareholder. So in this case, it's the positive. It could be the shareholder gave money to the corporation. So that's the opposite cash flow direction. So therefore that's a negative, okay? So we are saying when you are uh, issue new equities to the shareholders, the shareholder will give you money, right? So therefore you have dividend paid, that's a positive, and you have a minus the new equity issued because in that situation, the shareholder give you money, right? So the cash flow should be negative. So that's the dividend paid minus net new equity issued. Okay. Does this make sense? Okay. One, two, three. Does this make sense? Let's just think about the direction of the cash flow. The money is from which party go to which party, right? We defined one direction as positive, the other direction will be negative, right? That's why you see this minus sign here in this formula. Okay, very good. So now we realize we, are, we have a problem here because in the table, uh, we couldn't find the equity. Okay, we see assets, we see liabilities. We couldn't find the equity. What are we gonna do with this? Can we st solve this problem? In the table, we were only provided with information about assets and the liability. We don't know any information about equity. What should we do? Very good. Thank you, uh, Dante. 
asset equals liability plus equity, right? If you ever learned any of the accounting courses, <laughs> you, you, you have to remember this. If you can, you can forget everything, but you have to remember this one, right? So we can calculate equity by taking the difference between asset and the liability. Okay, so what's my assets? What's my total assets? How should I calculate my total assets? Total assets equals current plus long-term, right? How do I calculate my total liability? Current liability plus long-term liability. So what is my equity? <clears throat> equals total asset minus total liability, okay? And now I can just tell you the number uh, I get. Equity for 2019, that's 5440. Uh, equity for 2020, that's 67. Hold on, uh, I'm happy to Somebody have a I'm question? Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, Godfrey, you have a question? <laughs> no, sir. Sorry. No problem. Okay, so we get, if you, if you do the calculation, you will get uh, these two number, two balance for 2019 and 2020, okay? So now let's take a look. The net new equity, so I'm gonna use ending minus beginning, right? So I use the 2020 number minus the 2019 number, I get a difference of 12.99, okay? But don't use this number. Uh, don't bring this number to the to the equation, because because here is the net new equity issued. Okay, here is the net new equity. Equity can change by two ways, right? One one equity change is due to the shareholders. Shareholders will give the money, contribute the money to the corporation. That's in terms of shares. But also, equity has another component called returned earnings, right? This returned earnings is the company earned, right? So now let's take a look. What's the new equity earned in 2020? So to figure out the equity earned in 2020, you use the 2020 net income minus the 2020 dividend, okay? You make this much money and you pay off the shareholders, this amount of dividend, whatever left, that's called a return earnings, right? And this will increase your equity. So equity can be, uh, can change from two ways. One is due to the contribution from the shareholder. The other way is from your operation, right? When you are earning uh, money, you didn't uh, give all the money to the shareholder. You, you retained some of the earnings. That's called the retained earnings, right? So we know that income, we know the dividend. So we know the return earnings is 185.6. So this is the equity, new equity due to the earnings, right? So then you take the difference, the new equity issued would be the total change minus the change due to the earning. So that's your um, new, equity, new equity change due to the issuance, okay? Issuance of the shares. And now you bring this number to the formula, you figured out the cash flow to shareholders is negative $863.40. Does this make sense? Okay, one, two, three, sum up. Good, good. I even get a heart. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, so you can see that this is how we figured out the cash flow to shareholders. Okay. This is how we figured out cash flow to shareholders. Okay. So next. Now let's check. Let's check if the result is right. So the cash flow from the eyesight we calculated is 
uh, 60 cents. The cash flow to creditors, 12, 17. The cash flow to shareholders is negative $863.40, okay? So the negative number means that the shareholder um, actually have the, so that if you consider the total, right? The net effect, it's actually the shareholder gave the money to the corporation, right? The, the net effect is the $863.40, right? So you think about that. If you have a company, the assets, right? And you have assets equals liability plus shareholder equity, right? So cash flow from the site will equals, so what, whatever the cash flow you obtained from using the site can only go two places, right? It either goes to the creditor or it goes to the shareholder, right? It won't come to say share cash flow go to Wei Ming, right? It go, go come to me. So for a, for a company, that's how you raise your capital, right? You raise capital even when you have eyesight, right? There's only two ways, right? Either you, you take some money out of your own pocket. That's the equity. If that's not enough, you go to the bank, you borrow money. That's the liability, right? Together, you use this money to buy an eyesight, right? So the cash flow generated from this asset has to go to the creditor and the shareholder. It's nowhere else to go, right? <laughs> it has nowhere else to go. So we are saying we want to test it out. Cash flow from asset equals cash flow to creditor plus cash flow to shareholder. Okay. So fundamental ultimately we want to see if this is correct. Do you think this is correct? Is this balanced? Yes, it is balanced, okay? It is balanced. So when you are doing your quiz or doing your assignments, um, you get these three numbers. Uh, it's worthy of quickly, right? Check, have a check, cross check, right? Make sure these three numbers together make sense, right? If, if, they, they do not balance, then you, you did something wrong. Something you did wrong, right? It's just a way to help you to check your results. So are we okay with this question? This is my uh, kind of a condensed version of showing you how to do these calculations involved in these cash flows, okay? Does this make sense? Okay. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, so that's this question. Uh, if you have any question, uh, if you are too shy to ask <laughs> in front of others, you can always send me an email later on. Okay. Okay, now uh, to help you prepare some of the, uh, prepare the quiz, I have some uh, questions to illustrate here. Um, I have three more questions, I think. Yeah. So this question, the owner of the Fred's Electronics is trying to sell the business. The company built a building four years ago at a cost of 2.2 million. The building is currently appraised at 2.34 million. So this is the, the part that in a, in a textbook, it talks about the book value versus the market value, right? So, um, if you buy a house in Vancouver 20 years ago, it's probably worth like, you know, um, $300,000. But now it's probably worth 3 million, right? So the book value is what you paid, right? So you paid $300,000. That's your book value of that, that property. But now the market value is 3 million, right? It's 3 million. So you can see the book value versus the market value. So in this case, they were saying that um, the building cost 2.2 million, and now the value is 2.34 million. The firm's equipment originally cost 1.2 million, and now it's um, valued at 650,000, right? Uh, the inventory is listed on the balance sheet at $150,000. 
but it is only worth uh, $115,000. Maybe some of the inventories cannot be sold, right? Without uh, having a discount or something like that. The owner expects to collect 85% of the $300,000 in accounting rece accounts receivable. Well, the accounts receivable, right? Um, because of some of your uh, clients may uh, broke, may bankrupt it, right? They, they probably never can pay you back, pay, pay you back, right? The money they owe you. So the, in this case, the owner expects that only 85% of the balance can be collected from the uh, clients. Uh, the firm has $15,000 in cash, has total debt, 3.05 million. What is the market value of this firm, right? What is the market value of this firm? So the basic idea is I want to know the market value of the eyesight minus the market value of the liability. So whatever left is the market value of the firm. Okay. So with that, I'm going to do one by one. Okay. So I want to know the market value, right? This is what I want to know, the market value. So let's go with here uh, for the building, for this building, okay? The cost is 2.2. The appraisal value is the market value, right? Okay, 2.34. For the equipment, the cost is 1.2, but it's currently valued at, Six fifty thousand. The inventory is listed on the this one is one fifty thousand. That's the cost, but the market value is only worth one hundred fifteen thousand. The owner expect to collect eighty five percent of three hundred thousand. That's the market value. So I need to use three hundred thousand times eighty five percent. That's the value, that's the amount I can collect. So this one equals, uh, I think it's this number, 255,000. Okay, so this number. And the firm has a cash 15,000. And of course, for cash, the book value, the market value is the same, right? It's 15,000. And the debt, the market value of the debt is 3.5 million. So it's easy, right? So I'm going to just add up the eyesight, 2.434. So I'm using millions plus 0.65 plus 0.115. So I'm just uh, trying to make things easier. This number is in millions. Okay, so two point three four. So that's this one. Point uh, six five. This one and point one one five. This one and plus point two five five. That's one and cash plus point zero one five. This one. So this is all my eyesight, but don't forget we also have a debt, right? The debt will reduce the firm value. So we minus the debt 3.05. And this becomes my market value. Okay. Can anybody quickly do a calculation? Tell me what's the result? Oh, good. Okay, so 325,000. Oh, I have different results. I have different results. Okay, 325. Okay, so that's 0 0.325, maybe. Okay, so let's see if this makes sense. Yeah, that is the result I have. 325,000, okay? Does this question make sense? Okay, one, two, oh, even before I count, 
you already gave me some up. Good. <laughs> so, okay, very good. So I will move on to the next one. Okay, so I'm gonna. So next question is, um, let's see. Next question is here. Uh, Tim's Playhouse paid a dividend, a dividend, 155, interest expense, uh, 210, interest expense. The addition to return earnings, okay, the addition to return earnings is 245. Uh, the new equity, the new equity is 50. Net new equity, net new equity is 50. Okay. The tax rate is 20%. Sales is 1600. Depreciation is 160. What are the earnings before interest and the tax? So they want us to figure out what is my EBIT. Right? They want us to figure out what is the EBIT. We have done one. So this is one, uh, the format we used in the, in the last uh, example, right? In the previous example, you have seen this one. So EBIT is here. So normally we tend to think, well, if you tell me the sales cost goods sold, and depreciation, I'm gonna work from the top to the bottom to figure out what's my eBay, right? But in this question, we were only given sales information uh, and the depreciation information, but no information about the cost of goods sold, okay? So therefore, we are not able to do this way from the top to the bottom, but let's consider alternative. Let's from the bottom to the top, okay? See if that would work, okay? So what is my net income, right? So let's go from the bottom, net income. How do I calculate my net income? Anybody can tell me? How should I calculate my net income? So uh, remember, if I use net income minus dividend, what do I get? If I use net income minus dividend, what do I get? So I earn the money, okay? I pay a portion of that as a dividend to the shareholder, and then I have something left retained in the company. What is this called? Net income minus dividend. Okay, let's see. Return earnings, right? Yeah. So this is the addition. This is the addition to return earnings. So what is the net income? So the net income then, so net income is the question mark minus dividend 155 and equals addition to return earnings. So addition to return earnings, 245. So can you tell me what's my net income? What's my net income? You can turn on your microphone. Um, what's my net income? 400. 400, thank you very much. So that's the 400, right? So I figured this out. This is a 400, that's pretty good. Okay, so now the tax rate is 20%, right? Tax rate is 20%. So then I want to know what's my taxable income here. And I know the tax rate is 20%. Tax rate. Okay. 
Wait, so wait. basically, uh, go, go ahead, Godfrey. You have, you have the answer, Godfrey? Okay. So we are saying that um, if the tax is 20%, the net income should be 80%, right? Right? So you have 100% of the income, 20% that goes to the tax. Whatever left, the 80%, that's your net income. So if 20% of a value X equals 400, what is X? So X equals 400 divided by 80%, which is 0.8. So what is X? I wondered. 500, thank you. Okay. So I learned my taxable income. My tax income is 500. 20% of the, 20% is tax. So that's the 20% tax, which is $100, right? 500 times 20%, that's your 100. And so 500 minus 100, that's your 400, right? So this is good. So I learned that in order to have a net income of $400 with a tax rate of 20%, my tax income should be $500. So that's great. So now I learned this is 500. So next one, I just need to know what's the interest paid. The interest paid is, is that given? Is that information given? Interest paid. Tell me, what is the interest paid? Okay, two, yeah, very good. 210. So you tell me that what is my EBIT? What's my EBIT? Very good. So EBIT is 710. So this is an interesting question because it's working from the bottom to the top. Right? This is not. This is normally not the approach we are doing. We're always hoping that we have all the information. We go from the top to the bottom, right? We follow the formula. So, but you know, you know the mechanisms of this whole uh, format, right? Uh, you know how this calculation uh, is performed. So as long as you have enough information, that doesn't matter from which way, which direction, right? As long as you know the connections between the two between all these different uh, items, right? Um, doesn't matter which direction you go, as long as you have enough information, you should be able to figure out the unknowns, okay? Okay, so let's see. Just give me one second. Okay, so give me a sum up if you understand this. One, two, three. Okay, very good. So make sure that you are able to do this. If in the quiz you've seen a question like this, right? Make sure you are able to do this, right? Okay, so now let's have one more question. Okay, so that's the format, right? Your eBay is uh, 710, the interest paid is uh, 210, so therefore your taxable income is 500, and the 20% of tax, so that's 100, and the, the net income is 500 minus 100 equals 400, and then you gave dividend 155, so you have a return, you have 245 added to the return earnings, right, and so that's the story. The last question here, it looks pretty scary, lots of information, <laughs> big tables, but um, it's actually pretty simple, this question. So the question you were provided with the income statement, right? You were provided with a, a balance sheet, okay? So the question is this. If there are 100 shares of stock outstanding, what is the amount of the dividend paid per share? 
Okay, so they are saying, suppose that the outstanding uh, stocks is 100 shares, right? They want to know what is the dividend paid per share, right? So you know the number of shares, if you know the total amount of dividend paid, and that divided by the number of shares, you figured out the dividend per share, right? So this question is really asking you that, what is the amount of dividend right, paid to the shareholder? So in order to know that, you had to know return earnings, right? You had to know the return earnings and net income, right? And net income. So your beginning return earning, okay? Beginning return earning plus net income, minus the dividend should equal your uh, ending return to earning. This is the formula you learned from the uh, accounting course, right? Very, very basic formula, right? Your beginning re return earnings plus addition of the return earnings equals the ending, right? What is, what is the addition? Net income minus dividend. So beginning return earnings plus net income minus dividend equals ending return earnings. So what's your beginning return earnings? So this number is your beginning return earning, 74.85 plus net income, 420 minus dividend, that's the question mark we want to know, equals ending return earnings, 76.86. Okay, can anyone tell me what is my unknown in this question? Just to solve that equation. 226, wow, you guys are pretty fast. Good job, 226. So this is, good job, this is total dividend, right? This is the total dividend. Total amount of dividend is 226, right? But I want to know what's the dividend paid per share. Can anyone tell me? What's the dividend paid per share? Total dividend is 200, yeah, 2.26 divided by 100 shares. So the total amount of 226 divided by uh, 100 shares. That's the total outstanding stock shares. Uh, that, that's $2.26 per share. Okay, if this makes sense, please give me a sum up. One, two, three. Okay, good, thank you. So if in the quiz, you see similar questions to this. Are you able to, to solve it, get the correct answer? If in the quiz you see similar questions like this, are you gonna get 100% on this, on these questions? <laughs> Hopefully, okay. <laughs> okay, so um, that's all I have for today. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Are you okay? Okay, so if you don't have any question, the class is dismissed, okay? And uh, just a friendly reminder that the, uh, the quiz, quiz one, which is about chapter one and chapter two, will be opening, I think, tomorrow at 9 a.m., okay? And uh, it will be closed by Saturday at 9 p.m. So I, if I were you, I would not leave it until the last moment, right? You never know what is gonna happen. Your computer doesn't work, right? Auto power, right? So you, you try to do everything ahead of time, right? So um, yeah, if you don't have any questions, class is dismissed, and you guys have a good, good week. 
feel free to uh, send me an email if you have any questions, okay? And good luck with your kids. Uh, make sure you learn how to use the um, lockdown browser, right? If this is new to you, make sure you test it out, right? Tr try to download, follow the instructions provided on the blackboard, download all the browser and set it up. Make sure you know how to use it, right? Yeah. If you run into any problems, uh, please contact our IT group, right? So that's why I want you to do it earlier. Don't leave until the last moment, okay? Have a good evening, everyone. Yeah, good to see you, Godfrey. I'm glad that you are, you take this uh, followed up question, the followed up course. Yeah. Um. So I just give you some kind of illustrations, right, for the calculation questions. Um. So that you know, if you try to make sure you know how these things were done, right. So don't uh, don't be surprised if you see similar questions. Okay. Yeah. So LG and uh, Godfrey. Oh, you want a slide? Sure, I can post it. Yeah, you want to, to have this slide I'm using today, right? Yeah, I will post it. No problem. Have a good night, Godfrey. Bye bye.